Cassie Deputy at DeputyTribe.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of doing year-round schooling as well as not being tied to a specific curriculum. And these go hand in hand. So let's talk about that right after this. Welcome back to Deputy Tribe. Uh, my name is Cassie. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, go ahead and if you are watching a YouTube video, click the thumbs up and hit subscribe below. We um, really appreciate that. If you're not new here, thanks for joining. Um, my husband and I blog at DeputyTribe.com and we talk a lot about child training and homeschooling and ministry and raising your children according to the Bible. And that is what I would like to talk about today. Um, I would like to talk to you about two things, year-round schooling and not being tied to a curriculum and the benefits of these. Now, we have done both the year-round schooling approach, meaning that we do school. We don't have like an, a large summer break like the traditional school system does. And we have also tried the traditional school year September through May. And we decided for our family we're switching back to the year-round schooling. And I'm going to explain why. Now, what we do for our school year is we will typically do about six weeks of school and then take two weeks off, and then do six weeks of school and then take two weeks off. Um, but it's very much formatted around what's going on in our life. So for instance, we started school, let me think here, we started school beginning of August because we took May, June, and July off because um, we tried the traditional school year for the first time last year and did not like it. So we started in August and then our big family vacation was in the end of September, beginning of October, which happened to be two weeks long. So we had six weeks of school, took two weeks off. So now we started up school again, and we will be not doing school the week of Thanksgiving. And then probably the week after that, the first week of December. And then we're going to do a few weeks of school, but we're going to take two weeks off for Hanukkah, Christmas, and the New Year. Then we're going to have about another six to eight weeks of school somewhere in there. And then we'll take some time off because my baby is due in February. And so as you see, it kind of like conforms with what's going on in our lifestyle, which is the beauty of homeschooling. Um, if we decide to move this spring or this fall, obviously we'll be taking a probably month or month and a half off. But um, the benefits to that is a few things. When I've noticed when we take the entire summer off, there's not a lot of structure to that time, which is great. I'm not saying that all time needs to be structured, but I found that all of us tend to get a bit restless. Um, we all tend to slack in our diligence, in um, our devotional life, um, taking care of the house, there's just a lot of things that kind of slack. I also noticed taking that big chunk of time off actually set us back academically because we had to spend a good month or so kind of recapping everything that we had learned. Where in previous years where we never really stopped, we would take two weeks off here, a month there, a few days here, you know, a few days there or whatever. Um, learning was just a lifestyle and it was very natural and our work ethic grew and so I noticed that difference in schooling year-round and in taking a, the whole summer break off. Now the other benefit of this is we aren't feeling rushed. We aren't feeling like we have to finish XYZ by a certain time. We can really slow down and we can just take subjects as we learn them. Now in traditional 
schooling where you go September through May and you take, you know, and you enter a new grade level and all that stuff, you have a time limit as to when you can learn specific things that are specific to that grade. And I'm sorry, but <laughs> not every child especially is wired to learn specific things at a specific age within a specific amount of time. So when you're tied to that, and this goes hand in hand with being tied to a curriculum, um, real in-depth learning is not going to happen. I mean, you can't go through a history curriculum in the course of a year and remember and really take in and own all the information in that. And this is where I wanted to tie in not being stuck to a curriculum. What do I mean by that? Well, we use, for instance, for math, we use Math UC, which is a curriculum, which um, we absolutely love out of all the math curriculums that I've ever uh, reviewed or looked over or heard from other parents or other homeschool people or even other teachers, Matthew C. is definitely wired for us. We love it. We absolutely love it. And so we use that curriculum as a tool, but we are not required to finish a book in a year. We do it until we've mastered that subject, and then we move to the next subject, and we move to the next subject. And Matthew C. is very much mastery program oriented, meaning you understand this concept inside out, backwards, forwards, then you move to the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. And because of that, you have this extremely strong foundation that makes all this complicated, like abstract mathematical not even abstract, but, you know, mathematical things later in life, second nature, because you have this strong foundation in math facts and in, you know, those types of things. So we do use utilize a curriculum for that. We also utilize a curriculum for language arts, and we use eclectic foundations. And the reason for this also is there is also no grade levels. So Matthew C. doesn't have grade levels. Eclectic foundations does not have grade levels. And so with eclectic foundations, we can go at our own pace. We don't have to finish a level in a year. We can spread it for as long as it takes us to really get through it, understand it, enjoy it, digest the information, um, and things like that. So for history and for science and for music and for government and for all those other subjects, I see the benefits and I see the pitfalls of being tied to a curriculum. If I gave my kids a science curriculum and I told them, in one year you need to get through this biology book. So every day we're going to do the required assignments, we're going to get through it. That's what we're going to do. If you think about that, like for instance, we're reading through this history book, okay? And it, we ended the chapter with what happened after the apostles, okay? So the, the, uh, the next people group of Christians are coming up. You have the rise of the Catholic Church. You have the persecution of the Christians coming. And then you have um, all of the sudden you have Martin Luther and you have John Calvin and you have the Puritans and you have these people who are reading God's word for themselves for the first time. You have the Huguenots in France and they are elated that they are no longer under the oppression of the Catholic Church who was restricting them from reading God's word. So now that's where the chapter ends, and we studied Martin Luther and John Calvin in depth, but we never really got to dig into what's going on in the other parts of the world. And this was exciting because we have an audiobook by Heirloom Audio about the Huguenots and the French Revolution and what's going on with the Word of God in that part of the country. And we're also all of the sudden interested in, okay, well, we know that uh, St. Patrick was in Scotland and Ireland at this time, and we knew that there was a revival going on there. And so we have all these subjects that we are curious about and that we have connections to, but now if I'm required to start chapter 9 next week, or we're never going to make it through this curriculum, then unfortunately we don't get to dive into those areas that are really interesting us. And that is the key of education. Like, to slow things down and to digest something and to be like, oh my gosh, I remember this. Like, I remember this audiobook we listened to. 
Well, then we should go back and listen to that and fully get an understanding of it's setting up the scene for the birth of America. Okay, this is so exciting. This is how America was birthed from worldwide oppression and persecution on Christianity and a revival for his word and a hunger for the truth and a desire to live in a way that's not based on the traditions of men, but that's based on God's word and leading of the Holy Spirit. This is how the Puritans came to this country. And I really want, we all really want to digest this time period. We're excited about it. So we put our history book aside. We're going to get library books and watch documentaries and listen to audiobooks. And we're really going to get a good idea of what's going on in the world during this time. We're going to compare the French Revolution to the American Revolution and really, I mean, we're not tied down to a curriculum. Do you see that? Do you see the benefits of that? So you take another subject. Let's take science. We read about, um, my daughter Haven read about bees, and she's like so interested in bees. So we're putting everything else aside, and we're going to study bees, and we're going to watch how they make combs, and we're going to taste different kinds of honey. And I mean, she's really interested in that. She's got so many questions. I didn't know there was drones and queens and workers. And I mean, what a shame to not be able to explore that, because I have to get to the next chapter in our science book. Do you see do you see the push and pull here? Um, the other example this week is in our language arts program. My children were challenged. We're reading, um, we're talking about how to tell a good story. And we're comparing one person's storytelling, which was not detailed, it was just the bare outline of a story, compared to another person's storytelling, which was full of adjectives and descriptive words and details and settings and adventure and um, really painted the picture and, and played on all your senses. And and so their assignment a few days ago was to write their own story, and they were only given the bare outline, which was two sentences long, to write their own story. Um, and they, <laughs> I mean, I was expecting a one-page story. They had so much fun with it. They wrote like five, six, seven pages of these stories. And they read them to me, and I was out of my mind, you guys, these were amazing. Like their ability to write took me by complete surprise. So we put our language arts aside and they're going to type up their stories. They're going to illustrate their stories. We're going to go to the store and get them binded. So they're typing up, they're learning how to indent, they're learning how to spell check what to capitalize properly, how to put commas and periods and exclamation marks and quotation marks. And I mean, they're really going to write a really good piece of work that we're going to get binded and laminated. And what a learning experience. Now, if I said, no, we can't do that, maybe on the weekend, maybe on your free time, because we're stuck to getting this done by May 31st or June 7th, what an opportunity that they would have, they're gifted in this. Why would I not stop everything so that they could really invest in this and, and, and work it through and learn so much through it? You know what I'm saying? I approach our music lessons in the same way. Like, yes, I do push their daily lessons and their, and their things, but my daughter Ahava heard the song Furry Lease, and she is so obsessed with this song right now. It's all she wants to do. So I tell her, look, do the bare minimum in your, in your checklist of your practice time and hone in on Furry Lease. Figure out all the notes, practice it, listen to it. That's fine. I mean, if that's something that's drawing you, I want you to do that, you know? And so these two go hand in hand, having year-round school and not being tied down by your curriculum. Um, I mean, grade levels were never something that, I mean, that's a recent invention. And having these scopes and sequences of what our children need to accomplish at certain ages, that was never the norm until recent, recent years. And really, if you think about that, why don't we have kids who are mastering subjects anymore? I mean, there's such a problem with our education system. I'm not even going to get started on that. But we don't see kids who are really gifted in something and mastering it anymore because they're not given the opportunity because they're required to learn all these other things 
that they're not going to use, they're not going to remember, they're not passionate about, when we could actually be honing in on the things that we see, wow, you really have a knack for this, and you're really passionate about this, and you want to learn this now. If my child wants to learn something now, why should I say, no, you can learn that later when you're older and we actually take that course? That just makes no sense. So those are the benefits of schooling year-round, among a million other benefits. And also, it goes hand-in-hand hand with not being tied down to a specific curriculum with a specific scope and sequence and timeline and checklist. Um, so that's how we approach schooling. It makes it very stress-free. It makes every day fun and energetic. Um, we're excited to learn. We're excited to see what's coming next. There isn't a single subject I can think of where any of us are really like, oh, I don't want to do this subject. I don't want to do that subject. We really enjoy every single subject. All my kids do. My son enjoys cursive writing as much as he does math because He's learning and he's owning it and we're having fun and we're not progressing too fast. We're not, I'm not forcing him to learn things that he's not ready to learn. We're just taking it little by little and we're learning every day. So I hope this video and this audio recording, this podcast um, really just encourages you guys to, especially you guys who are homeschooling, to kind of rethink what the purpose of homeschooling is and to remember that you're not tied down by the world's idea of this is what a school day looks like, this is what a school year looks like, this is what the third grade, the fourth grade, the fifth grade looks like, but that you feel freed up to explore things with your kids and just learn the way that learning's supposed to happen. If you're interested in something, go study it. It's really not that difficult. I am all for having curriculum as a baseboard so that you can kind of gauge what you're going to be learning. I think we all need that. We all need some guidance, especially when we have a lot of kids and large families, but to not be a slave to that. Learning doesn't happen, you know, especially with children on a scheduled basis. It just doesn't. You, I mean, you name talking. You can't teach a child to talk before they're ready to talk where they're wanting to talk. You can't teach a child to ride a bike until they have become a certain age where they can acquire balance and motor skills and, and things like that. It's the same with our children. Um, so I hope that encourages you. I hope that frees you up. That is my goal in these videos and these podcasts is to really just breathe some fresh light and common sense to things that sometimes we've just been stuck in the rut of this is the way it's done when we can challenge those things and ask ourselves, is this really the way things have to be done or things are supposed to be done? So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or um, go ahead and visit our website at deputytribe.com. There's tons of information and articles, curriculum reviews, um, recipes, food inspiration. I call it food inspiration, super cheesy, but um, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. God bless.